Hello, candle lovers. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Greg, and this is All About Candles. And welcome to this month's episode of Burning Questions. You've all been sending me your questions at allaboutcandles at gmail.com. Today, I am here to answer them. Let's just get right into it, folks. You know that I miss old snail mail, so I like to print out the questions and put them in an envelope and use my letter opener to crank them open. In. I'm really going for a vibe here. You know what I mean? Like your old wise auntie. <laughs> Let's see what we've got today. I wonder who this is from. Oh, it's Mikhail. Mikhail is really near and dear to my heart. He has been hanging around All About Candles ever since I first started, and he's always got great things to say. Um, you guys know that I don't actually wear glasses or need readers, but once again, it's a vibe that I'm going for here at Burning Questions. All right, Mikhail. Hello, my dear self-proclaimed Canadian candle connoisseur. Here are some of my burning questions. Oh, Mikhail, you have got, you have come with a list this month, honey. All right. Uh, what is a candle crock? What is a candle hurricane? When is it more appropriate to use one over the other? Oof, well, that is a loaded question, Mikhail. I just so happen to have a candle crock here, so I'm gonna show you the one that I use. This is like a black marble candle crock that I got off of Amazon. I believe it was about $50, and it comes, you know, you just plug it into your wall, and this one comes with just a very basic, like, switch on and switch off. Um, I will link to some candle crocks below for people to purchase if they want. It's really hard to find ones that don't have like inspirational quotes and Bible verses on them, but they are out there. So I'll try to find some and post below. I'd love to have a candle crock that had like a timer on it or at least like an indicator that lets you know when it's on and off. But this is a pretty basic, pretty cheap one. What it does is it heats the candle from the bottom up so that if you don't wanna burn your candle traditionally, you can put it in the crock, heat up the wax and off it goes. I actually have a pistachio toasted vanilla right here. You literally just slide it in there like that, turn the thing on and this one heats up pretty quickly. I'd say that within like, 20 minutes, the wax is mostly like liquefied and you're good to go. Sometimes people find that candles that don't have good strength or throw perform better in a candle crock. Now what I use my candle crocks for is kind of a last resort. So if I have a candle that really has no strength and throw, or if a candle is dudding out a lot, or if it's like itty bitty wicks and teeny tiny flames, or if it's sooting, that's, those are candles that I usually will put in a candle crock and heat them that way. A lot of people use them just because they feel like it's safer than burning a candle. You don't get soot, obviously. You don't get smoke. So for a lot of people, it's just a personal preference. For me, it's kind of a last resort for candles that are misbehaving. Um, candle hurricanes are actually um, used quite differently differently, at least for me. I do have like a really large candle hurricane that's in storage right now because I don't use it very often. What I mostly use candle hurricanes for is to help, um, help single wick candles and two wick candles perform better. So I've got, this is a hurricane that I use and this I just got off of Amazon as well. I think it was about $20 and it's actually a tempered glass like vase. Like I think you're actually meant, it has a bottom in it. So a lot of people would say that this isn't technically a proper candle hurricane because there's a bottom to it. But basically what you need is something that you can place your candle in that will sort of give it like a tunnel of heat, right? And so if you, I put single wicks and double wicks in hurricanes like this so that um, they'll pool out a little bit quicker. And also something about the heat and the air in there tend to give candles a little bit more strength and throw. I'd say that if you put a candle in a hurricane, you can usually expect to get maybe a whole other 0.5 out of strength and throw from that candle. Um, and I mostly just use them for single wicks and two wick candles. 
pencils. Yeah, but what you do need to make sure is that if you get the type that's more like a vase, you still need to make sure that it's tempered glass so that when the glass heats up, it doesn't like break and shatter. That is very important. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons why you would use Hurricanes and Candle Crocs, and it's really a lot of personal preference, honestly. But for the most part, for me, I like to be able to just light a candle, set it down, and let it burn. That's what I really prefer to do. For me, candle lamps, candle crocs, hurricanes, those are all kind of like last resorts for candles that are not doing very well. Okay, um, let's see. How long did it take you to coin the phrase, hello candle lovers, my name is Greg, I'm yourself. I just love it. What was the process? Have you been brainstorming since way before launching your channel? No, I really, I really haven't. I had really no, um, no uh, lines. I didn't really come up with any like lines or catchphrases. I'm just making all this stuff up as I go along. And honestly, I watch a lot of YouTube myself and I listen to a lot of podcasts. And so I've obviously been like very inspired by many of the people that have come before me. Um, I'm really not reinventing the wheel in terms of like a candle YouTube channel, but this is all very, very flattering and I appreciate it. And most of the things that I say, like if you go back and you watch my first videos, I wasn't saying those things. Like it's been like a process to sort of develop like a format and a flow and all that kind of stuff. You're really trying to break the fourth wall here, Mikhail. <laughs> Would you consider at some point filming longer form content? I love listening to your videos in the background while I work or do chores. Okay, you're starting to make me feel like an egomaniac here. I, um, the longer the better. I understand it might be more work for you. You know, some of my videos get past that half hour mark. Um, I, uh, I, I, I think that this one is definitely going to be getting past the half hour mark. I kind of just want to record videos, um, that are the length that they naturally need to be. I really don't take into account how long a video should be. I don't have any like goals for that or anything. Um, it's kind of just whatever happens, happens. Like some of my reviews are three minutes, some of them are 15. Um, weekly wax wrap ups are usually like a solid 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I'm always trying to come up with new fun things to do on my channel. And I'm sure at some point that will involve more long form videos. Um, P.S. My favorite videos are Candle Shenanigans, My Two Cents, and First Impression Sniffs. Plain deal more from Montreal. Oh, Mikhail, you made my absolute day. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You are definitely a loyal, loyal all a booter. <laughs> and I really appreciate you, Mikhail. All right, let's see. I've got another letter here to open. Yeah. Ooh, I wonder who this could be from. <laughs> Don't you guys miss getting snail mail? I was saying in my first episode of Burning Questions that the only snail mail I really get anymore are um, uh, speeding tickets and parking tickets <laughs> and bills <laughs> and some Christmas cards at Christmas. But anyways, I love the feeling of like opening a letter. All right, let's see what we've got here. This is from Linda. Um, Linda says, Dear Greg, you often describe a candle as being mid-range or high-range. I honestly don't know what you mean by that. I've been burning for about three years now, but haven't run across anyone else using those description terms. Thank you, Linda. Um, Linda, yeah, okay, so uh, when I'm describing candles in terms of ranges, this is a little bit difficult for me to describe. So uh, candles that are a high range or a high pitched are often things like really, really sweet, um, fruity florals, really perfumey things. Um, some scent notes that I can think of that are high pitched would be things that are often sugary, um, um, like white florals, um, things that the first impression, like when you smell something, you sort of smell it in phases, right? So a really high pitched candle would be something that's quite sharp and like hits you immediately, right? 
And then a mid-range candle is kind of what you get in the center of that sniff. And a low range candle is something that is very like bassy, like a musk or like a tonka or uh, a deep wood or an amber, something like that. And I mean, this is tricky because there can be florals that are very bassy and florals that are very high range. Think of it in terms of like music. Um, if you were to describe the scent of a candle on like a piano keyboard, would it be the top high notes up here or would it be bassy notes down here? Um, and so a high pitched candle comes across as like shrill as having a high pitched voice way up here. Whereas like a bassy candle, I often describe as being like way down here, very low in the range, like a tonka bean or a deep amber but there can also be ambers that are up here, like a whiter, lighter amber. Um, and so, and, and it also kind of, it, it, uh, this is also part of the phrasing that I use when I talk about something being well balanced, right? Um, when you have a candle that's well balanced, you can often sniff out the high range, the mid range, and the low range. Okay, so uh, a sort of classic like Bath and Body Works formula is often a floral in like the high range of the candle, like the very first sniff that you get, and then something fruity in like the mid level of the candle, something a little bit sweet and smooth, and then something like dark and musky in the base of the candle, which is kind of your last sort of impression of the fragrance, your last impression of your sniff um, is like what's at the bottom of that candle, something musky, something a bit darker, all right? So I tend to like candles that are like very in the mid-level range to the base level range. So a candle from Bath & Body Works that I would describe as like a very high range would be like um, Laundry Day or White Gardenia. All right, and something that I would describe as very like bassy and low range would be like um, oh, blush amber and peony or into the night or, um, you know, something like a dark amber and oud. Dark amber and oud, that is like a very, very bassy candle. I usually find like fruity florals to be mostly like mid to high range candles. Gourmand candles are often very bassy like a very um, like a starchy or a, a, a syrupy sort of fragrance, I describe as like a base range. I hope that that helps. It is a tricky thing. It is a tricky thing to kind of explain. But when I speak of candles being well balanced, it means that there's layers to it. So you get something on the top, something in the mid and something in the base. I hope that that has helped somewhat with your question, Linda. I also have a question from Lisa here. Burning question. Do you burn wood wicks? If so, do you have a favorite brand and scent? I do burn wood wick candles sometimes, and I do actually have a favorite brand of wood wick candles. Um, Yankee Candle has, Yankee Candle is now owned by the same company that owns Chesapeake Bay and wood wick candles. I don't recommend those Woodwick candles. I think they're very overpriced and often don't have very good strength or throw. But there is actually a company based out of Calgary that I really love. And they do actually ship for reasonable prices to the US and to Canada. And that company is called Milk Jar. And this is one of my favorite candles from them. It's called Huga. And the scent notes are vanilla, tobacco, cedar, and salt. Now these candles do run you about $36 Canadian. So they're not cheap and they're only like eight ounce single wick wood wicks. Um, but they are really cute. They always come in really nice like frosted glasses. And yeah, this has a wood wick on it. I really don't think that it makes much of a difference if you're doing a wood wick or a regular cotton wick. I don't find much difference. Honestly, I don't. I think that it can be a little bit gimmicky to have these wood wicks. Oh God, this smells good. 
Yeah, so like I said, this is from a company called Milk Jar. It's a scented coconut soy candle. One of the things that a lot of people really like about the wood wicks is that they make noise. They crackle, almost like you've got like a fireplace with like a low fire sort of burning and crackling in there. They definitely make a noise. Um, and some people consider that a huge plus. And for me, it kind of depends on the mood that I'm in, I think. Because sometimes when I'm burning these milk jar candles, I do find it like a little bit of a comforting ASMR type situation. But sometimes when I'm burning a wooden wick candle, I find it kind of distracting. And I'll sometimes wonder once in a while if I have like, um, I have like a tap running somewhere. <laughs> and I'll find it actually kind of annoying sometimes times. So whether or not I like the sound that it gives off, I think depends quite a bit on the mood that I'm in. But in terms of like a candle's general burn and performance, I'm really not sure if the wicks make much of a difference. I was talking to an employee at Milk Jar once who was claiming to me that wood wicks work better with soy candles in terms of melting them and giving off good strength and throw. I'm not really sure if that's true. Um, I can understand why an employee would maybe be told that or think that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it even says on here that it's a crackling wooden wick as if that's like a big draw. And really, I'd say that the only substantial difference between a wood wick and a regular wick is that these make noise. You know, so it's really just a personal preference thing. And in my opinion, with my experience with candles, it doesn't really make much of a difference if it's a wood wick or not, right? Okay, from Joanne, it says, Hi, Greg, weekly question. What are your top gourmand throwers? An eight and above from Bath and Body Works in Goose Creek. Thanks for your content. Can't wait to get your opinion. I'm burning Goose Creek Carnival Apple right now, and it's a powerhouse. Oh, well, that's good to know, Joanne, for all those out there who buy Goose Creek. Carnival Apple is apparently a powerhouse. Um, so, gosh, this is tricky, because I, I, I'm a tough raider, I think. I think I'm fairly tough compared to a lot of other reviewers out there. Um, for me, an eight is a very strong candle and you don't come across them very often anymore. My sweet spot for a candle is probably around a seven, 7.5 or an eight. I think that those are like really my sweet spots for strength and throw. Um, I will tell you some Bath & Body Works candles that I definitely think get up there. Um, I think that a lot of candles from a lot of companies are a lot weaker than they were when they originally came out. And I mentioned that a lot in some of my candle reviews that I feel like when this candle first started coming out, it was an eight and now it's a seven. But in general, I'd say some really strong Bath & Body Works candles are the Toasted Pistachio and Vanilla, which I just posted a review of. Um, pumpkin cinnamon bun is a strong one. Paris Cafe, super strong. Blueberry maple pancakes. I don't enjoy that candle, but it is quite strong. Um, sweet carrot cake. I've always been impressed with the performance on sweet carrot cake. Berry waffle cone and summer boardwalk. I'd say that not all of those are necessarily always an eight anymore, but those are the strongest Bath and Body Works gourmands that I can kind of think of right now. Um, I just scribbled down some notes <laughs> when I was packing up this letter to open myself. <laughs> and as far as Goose Creek goes, I don't have as much experience with Goose Creek. They just started shipping to Canada like uh, in March or April. And I would say that Goose Creek does really well for strength and throw because they're almost consistently about a seven. I don't think I've had that many that have gone to an eight. But I do, especially the gourmands, I'm not the biggest gourmand person, so I'm not super familiar with gourmands from Goose Creek, but I can tell you that espresso cake pop, that was a strong one. A really nice, and it wasn't as sweet as I was worried it would be. It was a really nice sort of coffee cake fragrance, and that definitely hit an eight. So if you like, um, if you like uh, coffee candles, Joanne, I would definitely recommend Espresso Cake Pop from Goose Creek. All right, we've got another question here. 
Um, this is from JG9622. Could you please tell me what your name is? <laughs> Unless you're like in the witness protection program. I've been talking to you, um, JG9622. I've been talking to you back and forth for months now and I actually don't know what your name is. <laughs> Anyways, he says, I've been inquisitive since the time I was a child. I notice you wear the heart necklace in all your videos, so it must have some sentimental value. Did your boyfriend or best friend give it to you? If it's too personal, you don't need to answer. No, actually that um, necklace that you see me wearing in some of my videos, it's actually a guitar pick. <laughs> it's actually a guitar pick on a necklace. It's not a heart. And I actually just bought that necklace for myself. <laughs> it was not a present from my boyfriend or a friend, unfortunately. They should be buying me more accessories though, all right? All right, next question. Hello, candle lover, saying hi from Washington State. How are you? I have been loving your YouTube videos and have been slowly watching all of them. I do have a few questions for your next burning questions video and I thought I'd send them in before I forget. Number one, what do you think about candles with wood wicks? Well, I just went right into that, my dear, so there you go. Um, what is the most amount of money you have spent on a candle? Are luxury candles worth it? Mm. Gosh, the most amount of money I've ever spent on a candle, I have paid um, a little over $100 Canadian for one of those big, huge Homeworks candles. I think that they're like 60 ounces. Um, I bought that in a lavender fragrance a while back. I have also purchased some candles from Nest and Diptyque that usually run around like $60 to $80. I buy Voluspa once in a while. They're usually about $40 to $60. There's some candles I really like from Williams Sonoma that run about $60 to $80. Um, and so, uh, are they worth it? Um... Most of the time, no, I don't think they are. I think that luxury candles are really great because they have some awesome, unique fragrances. You know, I think luxury candles, you know, they sort of put the fragrance first and foremost, but then often don't make very good candles out of that fragrance. Um, you know, I've burned some nest candles that you know, basically have to go into a hurricane in a small bathroom for them to really be smelled. I'm trying to think of a luxury candle that I've burned recently that I would heartily recommend for its strength and throw, and I honestly can't think of one. I can't. Um, I really like, there's a, a flower and salt, a fleur de sel candle um, from William Sonoma. Those are kind of pricey and actually had good performance and would actually be a repurchase for me. Um, but for the most part, I feel like you can experience the fragrance of a lot of luxury candles by going into your department store or Sephora or Holt Renfrew and just sort of smelling them in store and like experiencing the fragrance. Paying $80 to take them home, especially when they're like little, like eight ounce single wick type of candles. No, I don't really think it's worth it. I buy those kind of candles sometimes because I'm obsessed. Once in a while, I feel like treating myself and I'll often say to myself, maybe this will be the one that has good strength and throw, but I feel like nine times out of 10, they really don't. Um, if you're on a budget, you know, I really think that the best throwing candles out there are from Bath and Body Works and Goose Creek. That's, that's it. Like consistently over the last six months that I've been doing this channel, candles from Bath and Body Works and Goose Creek, I often give a seven or an eight to, or at least I regularly end up being able to give them a seven or an eight. Whereas Right now, Kringle, Yankee, Homeworks, it's all really hit or miss. Those luxury candle brands are super hit or miss. At the end of the day, unless you have tons of disposable income that you can waste on like luxury brand candles on a regular basis, no, I really don't think that they're worth it. 15 bucks at Bath and Body Works or Goose Creek, those are probably 
not always going to be the most interesting and luxury sort of fragrances, but they do pretty good and they give you good strength and throw. And I have to say that lately Bath and Body Works has been teetering a bit more into that territory with some of their really great amber candles, you know? Um, so no, I don't think they're worth it. Okay, and your third question is, if you could create your own candle, what would the scent notes be? What color would you pick for the wax and what company would you want to create it with? Oh my goodness. Oh, if I could create my own candle, it would be a really, really deep, woodsy Tonka bean candle. I'm thinking Tonka with some cedar and some sandalwood and lots of Tonka and some vanilla. That's what I would want. It would come in a blue frosted uh, vessel. And the company that I would collab with to make it would probably be Milk Jar. I actually think Milk Jar, I would wanna do a three wick with cotton wicks, but Milk Jar has done a decent job of making coconut soy candles that have some good strength and throw to them. And they use lovely essential oils. So I'd wanna do it with them. Okay, if you could only burn one candle fragrance for the rest of your life, what candle would it be? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the next video. Thanks again for the content. It brings a smile to my day. I found your channel after your collab with Just Jen's Things. Oh, I love Jen from Just Jen's Things. You guys should check her out for sure. My favorite candle, if I could only burn one candle. That is rough question, girl. Um... If I could only burn one candle, I can't pick one. That's like trying to ask me what my favorite Madonna song is. I just can't do it. I could give you maybe like my top 10. If I could only burn one candle for the rest of my life, oh, it would probably be the candle that I just invented in your last question. <laughs> Something very Tonka and woodsy based in a beautiful frosted blue uh, vessel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I bet that's probably not the answer that you wanted, but... You know, I really like blush, amber, and peony, but I mean, I am not the type of person that has like top 10 lists and like, I don't think I'm gonna be doing those kinds of things on my channel, like top 10 lists, um, favorite five candles of the season. I don't like, I don't like having to sort of like rank things because my mind changes. You know what I mean? I feel like if you proclaim something to be like your favorite song ever, then you're kind of stuck with that for the rest of your life. Whereas my tastes change a lot. For example, like three or four years ago, I really didn't like coconut as a fragrance. And for the last couple of summers, I've been obsessed with coconut as a fragrance. You know, when I first started burning candles, I really, really liked like super sweet, like gourmand type fragrances. And now my favorite fragrances are like really botanical things, um, sea breeze, salty briny candles, amber candles, woodsy candles. So, you know, my tastes change a lot. So I can't tell you what my favorite candle is. I really can't. All right, we got another one here. Da, 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 da. Hey Greg, new subscriber here. I've been watching your videos for the past two weeks. I love your channel and look forward to watching your videos every day. Two questions. First, unrelated to candles, but I have to ask, are those records on your wall? Your older videos had Robin's self-titled album on the wall. One of my favorites. Yes, these are um, framed uh, vinyl record sleeves on my wall. Right now I've got Patrick Wolf, Kate Bush, Hoxley Workman, Darren Hayes, Marina and the Diamonds, and Rufus Wainwright. Um, this is like my sort of man cave, and I can actually fit 12 of these albums up on my wall, and I have quite a few of them framed, and so I do rotate them um, probably a couple of times a year. So yeah, in some of my first videos, it's probably a different arrangement. They've probably changed two or three times, actually, since I've started doing this channel, and yes, that was Robin's um, self-titled album that you saw. 
uh, in the background in some of my earlier videos. It is one of my favorite pop albums of all time. I absolutely adore it and it it really makes me smile that you knew that. This letter is from Kyle, by the way. Kyle, it really makes me smile that you that you pointed out the Robin record on my wall. Um, second, do you have any tips on avoiding wax discoloration and the burnt smell near the end of a candle? Even though I trim wicks, I feel like most of my BBW candles get nasty towards the end. Thank you so much, Kyle. Kyle. Oh, if I had uh, if I had a solution to Bath and Body Works candles dudding out at the last third of a candle, I would share that solution with you. Um, in fact, that is one of the main reasons why I have a candle hurricane and a candle lamp, because if a candle starts dudding out and I'm fed up with it, then I can put it in a crock or under a lamp. Kyle, you are not alone in this problem. All of our Bath & Body Works candles dud out at the last third. Um, if you're trimming your wicks, that's really good. Sometimes with Bath & Body Works candles um, and Goose Creek candles, at the, the last half of the candle, I might not trim the wick that much. I might just take the very top off. Um, I don't know for sure if that helps or not. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, Kyle, but you're not alone. A lot, there's a definite problem with the last third of a lot of Bath & Body Works candles. And in fact, the reason why I have a really strict policy that I only review candles on my channel once they've been fully burned is because I wanna be able to tell you guys if you're gonna run into those problems or not. So in fact, Part of the entire reason that I format my videos and my reviews the way that I do is because so many of these candles dud out at the one third point or sometimes even the halfway mark. And I think that that, I think that one of the most important aspects of a candle review is like the performance because a lot of people don't wanna waste their money on a candle that's not gonna burn past like the halfway point. Very good question, Kyle. I wish that I had a solution for you. Keep trimming those wicks. Um, some people remove wax. I don't recommend doing that. I feel like that is usually just a very temporary solution at best. I usually like to put them in a candle crocker under a candle lamp. All right. Thank you so much, Kyle. Um, you're, you're around the channel a lot, and I really, really appreciate you. Um, next up, we have got... Uh, Joe Lamb here, she comments a lot. We talk all the time. Um, for your burning questions, candle crocs. Which design performs better and or is more convenient? One piece with a full metal inner sleeve or two piece with the removable hurricane-like design while being ceramic? Should the sticker on the bottom of the candle be removed before placing a candle in the crock? If not, does the glue eventually make an unsightly stain on the hot plate area? Thanks for another great re review and dramatic scent story today. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I, I love reading your comments. Um, so does it leave a stain on the bottom of the crock? No, it doesn't. Now, I've been using this crock for, gosh, a long time. It's the only candle crock I've ever owned. I think I've had it for like five or six years, at least maybe seven years. Yeah, gosh. And it's the only one that I've ever owned. I am not familiar with these candle crocks that have a removable inside layer to them. I've only ever used this kind and it's always worked perfectly fine for me. I tend to think that probably the simpler the better. And so I don't know why you'd complicate things by having like an inner wall in them for some reason. Um, no, and so does this, I never take the sticker off of the bottom of a candle before I put it in a crock. And so for the past six or seven years, I've never had any problems. And I will leave candles in my candle crock for extremely long periods of time, like, 24 to 48 hours sometimes. Probably not the best idea to have these things turned on if you're leaving the house, but I will confess that I do. And I've never had any problems with stickers on the bottom or fire scares or anything coming off of it really. This 
actually really remarkably clean inside. I'm surprised. It is only the electrical plate that's on the bottom of this. It is only that that heats up. So it does heat the candle from the bottom to the top. I'm wondering if these like ceramic ones that you speak of also heat the candle from around it. If it does, I've never seen those before. That sounds fancy, girl. Um, should the sticker on the bottom of the candle be removed before placing in a crock? No, I never have, never had any problems. Uh, the glue doesn't eventually make an unsightly stain on the hot plate area. There we go, Joe. I hope that that like answers your questions for you. Um, Lisa Smith. Oh, Lisa, we talk all the time. I adore you. Thank you so much for writing in. Again, this is your second question. I already answered one. Okay, Lisa. Hi, Greg. I always love the dramatic readings. Thank you. Um, burning question. Can you tell us if you could only have five candles for a whole year, what would they be? I am nosy. Five candles for a whole year. They're all going to be Bath and Body Works candles, I think. That's just kind of where we're at right now. If I could magically make candles appear from the past, I would include some Yankee candles and some Homeworks candles. But in terms of things that I could have bought within the last couple of years, they'd all be Bath and Body Works candles. And they would be Into the Night, Blush Amber and Peony, Dark Amber and Oud, Pink Lavender and Espresso, and Fresh Bamboo. Fresh Bamboo. Yeah, baby. Fresh Bamboo for sure. Thank you, Lisa. Um, this is from Natalie. Hi, Greg. Been binge watching your videos and so have my dog and cat. Can you do a video or just an answer about hurricanes? I'm new to everything. Do you take the whole candle out and put in a hurricane or leave it in its own glass container too? I feel like I probably answered quite a bit of this um, in Mikhail's question earlier in the video. I don't really use my big giant hurricane anymore because for the most part, I expect larger three wick or four wick candles to have good strength and throw. Sometimes I do think about getting it out of storage though for my homeworks candles <laughs> but mostly what I use is like a large glass vase like this like I said you have to make sure they're tempered glass this isn't technically a hurricane because it has a bottom to it although some people would still consider this a candle hurricane honestly whatever works works as long as it's a heat proof glass that's pretty important I just place the candle in here I like having it in a hurricane with a I like having it a bottom to this so I can like move it around if I want to um, the only downside is is that you really do have to wait for the candle to cool down before you can remove it all the time you know um, but I feel like something like this is completely adequate if you're trying to get a single wick or a two wick candle to perform better and pull out faster something like this works just perfectly fine I'd say that this is about just a little over a foot in height. Yeah, and you just need to be able to make sure that it fits uh, whatever kind of candles that you burn regularly. Thank you, Natalie. Um, and I have one last question here. This question is from Mahumad Katan. Mahumad Katan says, I recently checked out your YouTube channel. Your video content is okay, but you have some problems. Your problems. Number one, vid Q CEO score not 100%. Problem number two, few views. Problem number three, no video optimized. Doing video SEO will increase your view subscribers like comments. Your video can reach target people through YouTube, Google search. There are hidden problems on your YouTube channel due to which your channel will not grow going forward. If you want to know the details, knock. I will wait for your reply. Now you listen to me, Muhammad Katan. This is not 
what the burning questions email address is for. And I get letters like this five times a day now, six times a day now. How dare you send an email to allabootcandles at gmail.com and tell me that my channel's not gonna grow? I've got problems. I've got few views. I'll have you know, Muhammad Katan, that I have over 100,000 views on my YouTube channel now. And I don't know really a lot about vidq SEO optimization. And guess what? I don't care. And guess what else? I don't think that I need you at all. I think that you need me to make your social media job a little bit more legitimate. Could you please tell all of your friends to stop sending me these emails as well? I would really appreciate that, Muhammad Katan. How dare you come into my house and tell me that you don't like my furniture and you don't like my walls and you don't think that this is a suitable space to live in. How dare you come into my house and offer your feedback when I don't want it. When you go into someone's house, you find something nice to say, especially if they're people that you want to work with. Muhammad Katan. And tell all of your friends to back off too, please. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that one in there for some and giggles people <laughs> okay <laughs> this video has run extremely long thank you all for bearing with me i really hope that you enjoyed it i'm gonna be doing a burning questions every month this was november's episode number two send me your questions to allabootcandles at gmail.com if you want to be featured in episode three which will air at some wednesday in december <laughs> all right folks thank you so much for joining me today Day. I really appreciate it. If you could hit me up with a like, comment, subscription, that would mean the world to me. And until next time, my dear gorgeous and beautiful candle-loving friends, let's burn some candles and bitch about it. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Bye now. <laughs>